Today, I want to talk about a pen that I've been holding off talking about for a long time, and that is the Lamy 2000. This is one of the first pens I've ever owned, not this particular one, but um, a Lamy 2000. But I've been holding off talking about it because there's so much content about this pen. This is one of the most popular pens in our hobby, and I wanted to feel comfortable that I had something, I brought a unique perspective to this pen before um, I made a video about it. Um, a lot of people have asked me about my opinion about the Lamy 2000, and um, you know, like as the title says, I think this is the best product that Lamy makes. And the reason why I say I don't say that lightly is because I have a, a soft spot for Lamy. I think they make a lot of iconic, great pens. So saying that this is the best that they make is, uh, I think, a, a big statement. So I want to spend some time today telling you about why. But first, I want to talk about why uh, I, I say Lamy is an important brand to me. Um, most of you may know that I tend to like to use Japanese pens, and Lamy is not a Japanese brand. If you look at just pens that I have currently inked up right now, I have this Pilot Vanishing Point, I have a Platinum 3776, and I have this Opus 88, which is a Taiwanese company, but this has a Japanese-made Sailor nib. So in terms of pens, I just prefer to use on a day-to-day -day basis. They tend to be Japanese pens. I've said many times on this channel that Pilot is my favorite pen company, but from an emotional perspective, Lamy is right up there. And I want to tell you a bit about why. So some of you may know my first fountain pen was a Lamy Safari. Not this Safari, this is actually a rollerball, but uh, a Lamy Safari fountain pen. I bought that pen when I was in school, and that $25 Lamy Safari was by far the most expensive pen I had bought until that point. And it was my only fountain pen for months. And I liked it so much that my second fountain pen was a Lamy Vista, which is just the clear version of the Lamy Safari. And between that pen, those two pens, the Safari and the Vista, those were my only fountain pens for well over a year. And when I started thinking I should really get a little more serious in the fountain pen hobby, I was really enjoying using those pens. I did a lot of research about pens. I looked at pens like the, the Platinum 3776, the, the Pilot Custom 74. I wanted my first gold nib pen. I looked at the Sailor the 1911, the, the standard size one. Um, I wanted a pen in sort of that price range. And after all of my research, I ended up picking up a Lamy Safari. And to this day, I just have such a soft spot for Lamy as a brand because they've really, they're, they're the company that got me into this hobby. And there are still pens that I, I really enjoy using. Um, the other reason I think Lamy is such an important company is because they make several pens that within our community are just so well known. Uh, everyone knows what a Safari looks like, an All Star, um, the Studio, even pens like the CP1, the Aeon. Um, they're pens that you can just picture in your mind um, when you say the name, which is not really true for a lot of pen companies, at least for not a lot of models. And I think Lamy is one of those companies that just has so many models that are popular within our community. So that's why you know, I think Lamy as a brand is has such a soft spot for me and why when I say this is the best product Lamy makes, um, I, I think that's a it's a pretty big statement. So let me tell you about why I think this is the best product they make. <clears throat> Excuse me, they make. And let me start by just getting a couple of negatives out of the way, and then um, let's talk about what makes this pen one of the all-time greats. So the, 
just a couple of negatives, and I'm going to use my notebook here to, to help me explain these for you. I think, in my opinion, there are two reasons that the Nami Safari is, um, well, could be improved, is, is not ideal, um, you know, just negatives or cons about the pen. The first is the shape. So if you look at the, the grip section of the pen, you see how it sort of tapers down? So if you think about a traditional fountain pen grip, so something like a Platinum 3776 or a Pilot 74, a Mont Blanc, you have something that's more like this. You have something that's more of this shape in the in the section. And I find that's in, intentional because that's the type of shape that feels most comfortable to hold for the majority of people. The Lamy is shaped, and this is going to be a little bit more exaggerated, but it's shaped like this with a small nib at the front. So it sort of tapers down. And it's actually quite thin as well. So in terms of holding it, what I found is that, especially in longer writing sessions, it's just not the most comfortable pen. The second thing is related to the nib. And you'll hear a lot of people talk about the fact that the uh, Lamy 2000 has a very small sweet spot and if you write it at an angle, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't work. That's all true and I can demonstrate that for you. So if you write with the nib in the sweet spot, writes very well. If you twist it a little bit, you can see it starts to skip, it gets scratchy. It's just, you know, it, it's not a forgiving nib. I have no problem with that. I have no problem using this pen in its sweet spot consistently. This isn't a problem for me. However, what is a problem is what I want to bring this pilot uh, vanishing point, pilot capitalist to, to demonstrate to you. So if you look at these two nibs, these are two pens that often get compared with each other because they are both in the similar price range. They are both quick draw type pens. The Lamy 2000 has a very easy snap cap. The Vanishing Point is a is a clicker pen. I mean, these pens are both very easy to, to get up and running quickly. They also both have these small gold nibs. However, even though these nibs look really similar on camera, they are actually quite different. So let me explain. So the Lamy 2000 nib looks something like this. If you were to pull the nib out of the pen, it looks something like this. That's pretty much the entire nib. The Pilot, on the other hand, looks something more like this. Whoops, excuse my drawing here. So if you were to pull the pilot nib out of the pen, what you'll find is that the nib extends way further back into, into the, um, the nib section, I guess. And the benefit of that is that this extra gold material, it makes for a smoother writing experience. And what I mean by smoother is not smoother in terms of the tipping material and the friction on the paper, but the smoother in terms of the gold material being able to dampen the feedback that's coming and what you feel in your hand. There's only so much a nib of this size can do as opposed to something this big. So my second negative about the Lamy 2000 is even though this is a gold nib fountain pen, because the nib is actually so small, you know, this pen writes incredibly well for how big the nib is, but you can't get around the fact that it's a very small, very stiff nib and it doesn't really offer a premium uh, gold nib feel of a fountain pen that you would expect, especially if you compare this to something, anything with a, a standard size gold nib. I mean, the, the vanishing point is, is a much better experience, but if you compare this with something like a Pilot Custom 74, something with like a more traditionally sized nib, something that looks more like this shape, what you'll find is that this is just not as refined of a writing experience. So those are my two 
negatives of the pen. But why do I say that this pen is the best product that Lamy makes? The first is around just the objective value. This pen, if you compare it to what else you can get across European makers, Asian manufacturers, you get a lot for your money here. The, the fit and finish is really nice. The material quality is really nice. You have a very nice stainless steel clip. You have, it's, it's spring-loaded. The pen is very nicely made. The tolerances for the blind cap are really tight. It has nice details, like having that stainless steel part in the back. It has nice use of materials, like the stainless steel uh, section here. It has a very nice uh, capping mechanism. It's just a solid pen. And if you compare this to what else you can get in this price range, you're pretty much looking from the Europeans, you can get something like a Pelican M200. It's a very, you know, the lower tier of Pelican pens. You can get basically nothing from Mont Blanc. Um, from Parker, you're basically looking at a gold nib version of the Parker Sonnet, which is really not as nicely made as the, as the Lamy 2000, and that's a cartridge converter um, type of pen. It's just, it's not really in the same class in terms of build quality. Um, from Waterman, you're looking at something like a Waterman Karen or a gold nib version of a Waterman Expert, both of which are really not in the same tier in terms of quality. Um, from Japan, you're looking at pens like uh, a Pilot Custom 74, which is one of my favorite pens, but I will admit it is not as nice as the Lamy in terms of uh, material quality, um, in terms of features, and same can be said about the Platinum and Sailor options. So just compared to other brands, this is just an objectively good value. Even if you look within the Lamy lineup, the price of this pen will buy you something like a gold nib version of the Lamy Studio. And that is just not as nice, not as well thought out, not as well made um, as this pen objectively. But more importantly, why I think this is the best thing that Lamy makes is because this pen is such an iconic pen with, with real provenance. And if you think about this pen, the fact that it came out in the 1960s and it has changed very little since then, I think is quite remarkable. This pen looks fairly modern today. Just imagine what it looked like in the, in the 60s. This was something really quite revolutionary in terms, of, in terms of pens. If you think of pens that came out around this time, pens like the Parker 51, that feels so vintage and archaic compared to this. And that has a very, you know, half-baked effort of a, 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 you know, modern reinterpretation that's launched a couple years ago. There's, I feel like there's no reason to get something like that when you can get something like this, which is, which is really a clear descendant of, of the original pen. This pen has this strange ability, unique ability, to be both modern and have a vintage feel at the same time. Modern because this Bauhaus design, it really hasn't gotten old in, since it's been, it's been out. It still, it, st it still looks like something that could have been designed very recently, but yet it has, compared to other Lamy products, I mentioned the Lamy Studio, compared to products like even the Safari or you know, All Star, this pen does feel like it comes from another era. The material is not like anything else Lamy uses in its lineup. It's a piston filler, which Lamy really doesn't do. Like this is, this is very much a pen from a different era that's manufactured with modern tolerances and modern quality and a pen that's design was so, so good, you know, so futuristic at the time, so clean, that it still gets away today as being a nice pen. There's nothing else really you can buy 
that has this type of provenance and um, just so being so iconic in the pen industry for anywhere near this price. You could argue there's pens like the Mont Blanc Meisterstuck pens, which have also been around for a while. But if you think about those pens, one, they're much more expensive. Um, and two, they're uh, pens, there are a lot of pens that look like it. I mean, pens like um, pens from Platinum, from Sailor, from Pilot, from other European brands, they've all sort of, you know, copied, I don't want to say copied, but they all, they all sort of have that cigar shaped black with gold trim type of look. There's nothing on the market aside from, you know, Asian knockoffs that look like the Lamy 2000. So to get a pen with the history, with the quality for this price, it's it's the best thing they make. So that is why I think the Lamy's 2000 is such a great pen. And I'll just wrap up this review by showing you a bit about how this writes. So this is a Lamy 2000. This is a medium nib. And I have Waterman Tender Purple. So there you have it. That's my perspective on the Lamy 2000. This is very different than my perspective of other pens. I usually tend to hold the writing experience as the most important part of a pen. However, for this one, this is not the most comfortable pen to use. The small little uh, gold nib does not give you the best writing experience, but for the history, the I, just how iconic this model is, the build quality, and just how cool it is to use a pen that was designed so long ago, but is still relevant and available to buy new today. That's something that is just there's, there's no real other option that gives you that for anywhere near this price range. So for those reasons, I think the Lamy 2000 deserves all of the attention that it gets. It's one of the most popular pens in our hobby for good reason. And despite the fact that my first pen was a Lamy Safari and I adore that model, I think this is by far the best product that Lamy makes. So hope that was fun and I'll talk to you guys later.